So welcome. You know, I cannot say, this is not the beginning of my talk, this is my preamble, as we say. I cannot tell you, as I sit there, listening to Reverend Chris do such a wonderful job on our prayer time, that was just wonderful. Thank you so much. I cannot tell you what strength I see in this room. You know, we're moving right now into talks about gratitude, and sometimes you think gratitude comes from a place of, of weakness, of, oh, I need this help, thank you so much. That's not it at all. I mean, I see such strength and courage and resilience and hope and grace in this room. I just had to say that. It just struck me as I sit there. I've never seen a more grateful, loving, open group than all the brave souls here. And I'm grateful for all of you. So, let's start our series on gratitude. I love doing a gratitude series because it's just, for so many of us, it's just second nature. As I was thinking about the topic of gratitude, kind of launching this new series, I kept thinking of the topic of balance. I don't know, it just came to me. It, it just, the subject of balance. And then what came to me, and you all are so glad it did, is my totally goofy title. <laughs> Gratitude, all the essential food groups. <laughs> because I thought, it's just like the diet, isn't it? I mean, gratitude gives you a sense of balance. It keeps you moving when your little boat may be a little rocky. And at the same time, when we focus on diet, on nutrition, we're told to eat a balanced diet, aren't we? All the, you know, some dairy, some vegetables, some fruit, whatever. And if we eat all that, we will be strong and vibrant and energetic and our bodies will serve us well. But choosing to view our world with a sense of gratitude is just like choosing to eat foods that are healthy for you. Work with me on this. Okay. It's choosing to... Yeah, Jeannie's like, it's working for her. Okay. Okay. It's just like taking into your body... Tastes good. It's yeah. tasting really good, guys. Yeah, it's tasting good. It's like taking into your body foods that are healthy. When you choose to live with gratitude, you choose to shine a light on the events and the circumstances of your life that prove nourishing, that, that lift you up that support you, that keep you well. I mean, we have a choice, don't we? We can go out and we can see donuts and cakes and, you know, excessive whatever, <coughs> sugar, preservatives, and we can say, man, that looks good. And we can eat it, and then what happens? It weighs us down. I mean, kids, we're really happy, somebody says. Yeah. <laughs> We gain weight. If we eat too much sugar, we can develop diabetes. Our cholesterol goes up. It is not nourishing, even though it may initially be attractive and tasty and very tempting, right? The same is true with gratitude. When we choose to take in those thoughts, those impressions that nourish us, when we choose to shine the light of our thankfulness on the events around us, that sticks with us. Doesn't it? Our stress goes down. Our outlook on life improves. We are calmer. We are happier. We spread joy. We are more the true channels of who we are here to be. We may be tempted by thoughts that drain us, that weigh us down. Don't we all get thoughts of limitation and fear and doubt? You shouldn't think that. You're not big enough for that. You can't do that. That's not your job. Just sit down and be quiet. Am I the only one who gets those? No. We all have those. No. When we shine a light of gratitude on our lives, we have the courage and the light to say no to those. We have the courage to say that we are a child of the divine. And we have the right and the ability and the potential to shine in our worlds as we are meant to do. The limiting thoughts are illusion. So, just as a balanced diet arises from eating the right mix of foods, there are components to a life lived with gratitude that give rise to a healthy and a vibrant spirituality. So when you are feeling grateful, when I am feeling grateful, what are the elements that comprise that? Okay, joy, right? Wonder, awe, humility, creativity, all those go into a feeling of gratitude, all of them combine to create a grateful heart. 
a grateful outlook, which is the absolute foundation to a healthy spiritual practice. In his book, The Science of Getting Rich, Wallace Waddles wrote of the primary importance of gratitude to attracting to you your prosperity. Now, he talked about money, but it's not just money. It's any prosperity. It's friends. It's community. It's health. It's whatever adds to your good. He spoke of the importance of gratitude to attracting those to you. He taught that the soul is always grateful, that lives in closer connection to God. The soul is always grateful that lives in closer connection to God. Okay, so he said, God, substitute whatever word you like. Spirit, the universe. What was it I said a few months ago? There was a guy that said, God is the norm. So he had a client who started calling God norm. Remember? <laughs> whatever you want. The soul is happier that lives in connection with norm. <laughs> okay? The Cheers. mental attitude of gratitude draws the mind into closer touch with the source from which blessings come. Doesn't it? Think about that. An approach of gratitude draws us into closer touch with the source from which our blessings come. We know it. We feel it. We experience it. We cannot exercise much power, he teaches, without gratitude. Because it is gratitude that keeps us connected to our source of power. It's not just walking around being grateful. Oh, thank you for this. Thank you for that. It's not like we teach our kids you should say thank you. It's being connected to the source that gives us our power, that channels its power through us. It is when we are in touch with that source from which blessings come that our power comes, that our lives are transformed. So I thought about that. That was a captivating thought for me because it's so much more than just looking at the world with gratitude. It is the way we tap into who we are. It is the way we tap into the source of our power. So I thought about that, and I invite you to think about that. When you feel most connected to source, to creative mind, to divine mind, what is the energy that is in your heart? Think about that. Feel it. Just be with it for a minute. What is the energy that is in you when you are most connected to source. What made you that open channel to the divine that just courses through you like a river, that turns you into the expression of pure love that you are here to be? What energy is working on your heart? What energy is going through you when you feel that? That feeling of connection, of wholeness, of oneness that is our potential and our birthright. For me, it is a feeling of gratitude. It just is. It's that open, loving feeling of just thank you for it all. And it's not being thankful for this, being thankful for an item, you know, whatever you just got. That's not it. It's being thankful for all the good surrounding me, all the everything surrounding me, the gift of love that is freely given to us. Undeserved unreturned, it is just freely given every day and every moment for the privilege of being here as messy as it sometimes is. It made me think, I used to walk around, and this probably looked pretty goofy to those observing, but I used to just walk around and I would look at the trees and the traffic and, and everything around me and I would just look up and I would sometimes say it out loud, I would say, I'm going to miss all this. Do you ever do that? I did. I would just say, gosh, I'm going to miss all this. Because you just have a sense of just, wow, just awe and wonder and thank you for the good stuff and the bad stuff. Because the bad stuff adds to the good stuff. The good stuff wouldn't be good if we didn't have the bad stuff to compare it with, would we? It's all the, it's, it's a balance. It's the yin and the yang. I just say thank you for all of it. It's an open feeling. It's an open and accepting and a loving and a wonderful feeling. Knowing that we are in the flow of life. That even when things are challenging for us, we are supported and held in the divine flow of strength and power and love and support. Our lives are wonderful gifts that are unfolding for our benefit and for the benefit of others. Isn't that a feeling that just lifts your heart up? Just breathe into that for a minute. Our lives are always unfolding for our own good. 
When I think of grace, that is what I think of. Unexpected, <clears throat> but always present. The Christian mystic Thomas Merton wrote, Gratitude, therefore, takes nothing for granted, is never unresponsive, is constantly awakening to new wonder and to praise of the goodness of God. Again, your own word. For the grateful person knows that God is good, not by hearsay, but by experience. And that is what makes all the difference. Okay, that's an important point. We know that the universe is good by experience. Don't we all know people who are so schooled in, for example, new thought? They've read all the books, they've been to the seminars, they've bought the DVDs, but they're still unhappy. They're still, they haven't got it. They, they're like, I, I think in Islam they say, it's like a guy walking along with a donkey and a cart on it of a thousand books. But it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if the knowledge is there, it has to be there. That is the difference between experience and information. Our challenge is to take the information we learn about spiritual practices and use it to create that experience of a connection with God. Because that's where our lives are transformed. It's not just information. It is living it and doing it. And that's why here at One World we focus on our spiritual practices. Because that is what makes the difference. We know that God is good not by hearsay, but by experience. We feel it. We are in the flow of it. Living life with a grateful heart opens you to the experience of spirit. Merton, Thomas Merton and Waddles were saying exactly the same thing. Merton says, for the grateful person knows that God is good, not by hearsay, but by experience. And Waddle says it is gratitude that keeps us connected to the power of source. And that's the same thing. From two different traditions, different times, their own life experience brought them to that same truth. So, gratitude is the energy that keeps us moving down our path. Remember the other day I was talking about going toward the good? letting the universe lead us toward our good, it is gratitude that impels us down that path. It is living life with the open heart of wonder and gratitude and humility and awe that keeps us spiritually healthy and vibrant, moving us forward toward our lives unfolding. A couple of weeks ago, when I talked about that, I hadn't really focused on it as being a feeling of gratitude, but I believe that it is. Gratitude, which is deep awareness and appreciation of the magnificence of creation around us, is truly the energy by which we co-create. It's the energy that puts us in partnership with the divine, that helps us, that leads us to co-create our own good. His Holiness the Dalai Lama teaches, appreciate how rare and full of potential your situation is in this world. Then take joy in it and use it to your best advantage. Isn't that great? Appreciate how rare and full of potential you are in this world. Take joy in it and then move forward. Isn't that great? The first step is appreciating it, then we take joy in it, and then we move forward and we make a difference. We don't stop at either one of those steps. We are each in a situation of unique and wonderful potential. And approaching life with a sense of gratitude enables us to know it, to take joy in it and move forward with strength and focus and energy through, through the good, through the not so good. So, when do we have the opportunity to appreciate our situation? See, it's okay when things are going well because then we're grateful, things are going great. We also are clued into it when things are not going great because especially here in New Thought, whenever things are not going well, our our first instinct is always there's a lesson here. I am grateful for this because I know that it is going to teach me something. And so in both those instances, on both ends of the spectrum, we are aware of the need to be grateful. Where do we sometimes fall down? Where do I sometimes fall down? On just regular old days. Don't you? When I'm just moving through my day, things are okay, things are not so bad, things are not so good, I just take for granted everything that is around me. When we look at ordinary things, in a way that we usually don't notice when we shine a new light on them, 
when we look at them in a new and grateful way, we see miracles where before we only saw stuff. Our health, a safe place to sleep, good nourishing food, friends, community. When we look at things with a fresh eye that normally we didn't notice because they're around us all the time, that's when a sense of gratitude truly permeates our lives. We forget that all these things are precious. We just forget because we are so busy and they are always so there, don't we? But when we make the effort to look at them anew, then we see that they are truly miracles. Author Alan Cohen writes, appreciation is the highest form of prayer, for it acknowledges the presence of good wherever you shine the light of your thankful thoughts. Isn't that a great image? We shine the light of our thankful thoughts. Normally, I shine the light of my totally zoned out thoughts. You know, I need that, I'm going here, I'm driving there. But if I shift it to a light of my thankful thoughts, it creates a miracle where before I only saw a thing. And that is the truth of the wonder of creation that is around us all the time. I've, I kind of heard it put this way. The challenge is to live every day as though it is your first and also as though it is your last. Think of that energy. Every day as though it is our first and it is our last. Wouldn't that sharpen our focus? Wouldn't that open our hearts? Wouldn't we just look around and say, man. I just love all of this. Thank you for all of this. That may be the way to approach it. Okay, now I am quite lucky in terms of everyday appreciation because I live with a wonderfully open and appreciative and loving young man. I live with my oldest son, Nick, who you all saw here dancing and leading the opening song. He is simple, he is direct, he is loving, he is just an exceptional young man. Now, the world will say he has cognitive limitations because of his Down syndrome. I look around and sometimes I think I am way more limited than Nick is. He just has an open heart to the now, to love, to the present, to the gifts that are in front of him. For example, Nick loves to eat, as you will see in about 20 minutes. So every meal he has, this is wonderful, every meal he has, he sits down and he goes, best meal ever, best lunch ever, every meal he has is the best meal ever. And so, you know, I kind of got used to this, I'm like, oh, Nick, best meal ever, whatever. And one day, my wife's cousin heard him say that, and he said, just imagine as if you lived your life as if every meal was the best meal ever. It was just an epiphany for him, I'm like, my God, you're right. What if we all lived our lives as though every meal, every interaction, every whatever event was just the best ever? Because for him it is. He is constant appreciation. <coughs> he is a gift who just reminds me every day how lucky I am to be here. Just in his light. And we can all be that way. What a wonderful focus. So. Let's ask ourselves, what ordinary circumstances in our lives, when we get up and walk out of this room, what ordinary circumstances in our lives can we shine the light of thankfulness on? The good, the bad, even the tough, because we're grateful for that too. Because that teaches us, it grows us, it stretches us in ways that good times do not. Don't they? When I feel grateful, I don't stop with the good. I am grateful for all of it, even the mess. It is a habit, gratitude is a habit that we can learn. Uh, one of the things we're going to focus on over the next few weeks is what practices can we use that help us develop a sense of gratitude. Last year we all had those little gratitude journals, remember? And I know that a lot of people still do gratitude journals. You can say thanks at every meal. You can have your own daily ritual that some, somehow prompts a sense of gratitude in you. So let's think about those for the next few weeks. Because at some point we're going to have a discussion and we're going to share them. What are the practices which keep gratitude front and center in our lives? Whatever practice we have, its goal is to maintain our awareness of the good and of the opportunity for good that is always around us. It reminds us that we are not going to be defeated by what discourages us, by what challenges us, that we are going to be uplifted by every opportunity and every 
lesson. Let me close with uh, a quote I got from Khalil Gibran, which I really love. And it's about how even those challenging circumstances can be a benefit to us. He writes, I have learned silence from the talkative, tolerance from the intolerant, and kindness from the unkind. I should not be ungrateful to those teachers. <laughs> yeah. It's all an opportunity to be grateful. So let's take these thoughts into meditation.